Good morning, uh, good people, and welcome on board another edition of the uh, program, The Papers on Canal de English. On the papers, we look at what the uh, daily tabloids uh, uh, say in Cameroon, and in the second uh, part of the program, we analyze uh, the contents of the newspaper with our guest in the studios. My name is Leslie Fombo, and I'm glad to be your host today. We unveil the uh, program this morning with La Meteo, which uh, captions on the recent ban on the popular heat uh, track Cole La Petite in the MIFI. The story is a uh, focus on the impact of the decision taken by the prefect for the MIFI, saying uh, consumers of the music uh, received the news with uh, mixed uh, feelings. Details on the story says the ban has become a major publicity for the song. Le Messager this morning uh, focuses on the war against terrorism. Details on the uh, story says the Chadian army uh, leaves uh, Cameroon after 11 months in the fight against uh, Boko Haram. You can read more on uh, page 2 of Le Messager this morning to quench your thirst on that uh, story. After 33 years, Cameroon is uh, regressing. That's on uh, page 3 of Le Messager this morning. Uh, details on the story is a focus on the 33-year reign of uh, President uh, Paul Bia. The story uh, assesses the development drive after 33 years in power. You can read more on uh, page uh, 3 of Le Messager, that is uh, today's edition. On uh, page uh, 12, Le Messager captions on another interesting uh, story saying the Indomitable Lions for former trainer, Volker Finke unveils the cause of problems in the national team during his term of office as head coach of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon. Mr. Finke blames his failure to deliver the goods on the normalization committee and on the current president of the Cameroon football governing body, Tombi Aroko. You can read more on page 12 of Le Messager, today's edition. Another paper, Loy Dusail, uh, also visits the war against uh, Boko Haram, uh, saying the Chadian troops have left the country. Details on the story says close to 30 soldiers are refusing to return, while over 100 Chadian forces are already in protocol with uh, the mixed uh, multinational force to combat uh, Boko Haram. La Nouvelle Expression this morning uh, captions on poverty in Cameroon. The paper uh, rates uh, poverty in the country. The paper says the poverty rate in the country is alarming. You can read more on uh, the story on page two of La Nouvelle Expression this morning. The details on the story says uh, an average Cameroonian needs at least 130,000 francs per month to stay out of poverty. Another paper, Calara captions on what uh, the paper calls abusive dismissals at Enyo. The story says ex-employees um, of the company are demanding the sum of 6 billion francs a CFA from the company. Details on the story says the problem dates back to the days of A.E.S. Sunel. You can read more on page 8 of Calara uh, this morning. Now, the uh, bi-weekly in, in English, the post um, uh, says uh, U.S. Deputy Ambassador x uh, Cameroon. Details on the story says uh, the, uh, the, the, the says, uh, discourses corruption uh, impediments and outlines uh, supports for army against uh, criminal insurgents, advocates independence of uh, judiciary, legislature, praises countries' rare peers, uh, peace and stability, uh, looks at police, uh, gendarmes and human rights and uh, bias hanging on to power. The paper says Cameroon has a very rarely in recent ceremony been accredited with as much uh, as a semblance of good governance such as the Deputy Chief of Missions at the United States Embassy to Cameroon, Matthew S. Smith. And we still stay on the post uh, that captions on another interesting story. Young orders 1,000 retirees to leave public service. Details on the story says, uh, in if the instructions of the Prime Minister, Head of Government, Philemon Young, are fully respected, over 1,000 people who are due retirement will be leaving the public service uh, very soon. During a cabinet meeting that took place in Yaoundé recently, the Prime Minister, the paper says, ordered the various ministers to sweep their ministries clean of retirees who are still hanging on to their post. Another paper, the Star this morning, captions on the Anglophone marginalization in Breglio. Uh, the story says, Fon V.E. Mukete hits hard, says English-speaking Cameroonians never joined their French-speaking brethren as a conquered people. It was on a clean political slate that a union uh, became feasible. The issue of bilingualism between the two entities, non-negotiable. I sent a memo to Prime Minister Philemon Young on Cameroon Tribune neglect of English language. My dream is to see Cameroon united in the, in the eyes of all and in the eyes of God. 
Another story on the star says uh, 75th uh, anniversary of World War II, British High Commissioner salutes bravery of uh, fallen soldiers in Limbe. And uh, finally, uh, Eden says, uh, is in Eden captions on the ongoing CPDM reorganization. The paper says uh, CPDM reorganization blues. Strange maneuvers uh, bogging exercise in first coupe Maningoba. Rose Ngasa elbowing way to section president, but elite indigenous same over our dead bodies. Suspect uh, central committee SDO meddling divisional team between rock and deep sea. And in Meme, party cards are flood churches, beer parlors, in Jangi houses, schools, echoes of old rivalries um, reverberating, aspirants uh, exchange blows. And in Mezam, juicy Congress Hall creates hottest uh, battleground. And finally, in Fako, consensus not um, dousing old enemies, Donga Mantung, the cards and the players. Thanks for your kind attention. That's how we saw it for the very first part of the program. We now move over to the second part where we shall be analyzing the contents of our papers this morning. Good morning once more, Mr. Ellie Smith. Good morning, Leslie. We are delighted to have you once more on board the very first edition of the papers this week. It is always a pleasure to be here. What caught your attention? I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. What caught my attention is uh, the coming out of uh, from Mukete who says something that everybody knows in this country that English is marginalized. But now he has even been more precise. He says the Cameroon National Daily, which is Cameroon Tribune, marginalizes the English language and which is abundantly correct. And I see what he did. And I think what Chief Mukete has done is a wake-up call to most Anglophone elites. You know, if, 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 uh, first and foremost, uh, Chief Mukete is of the uh, CPDM, and uh, Cameroonians have been uh, complaining that uh, uh, the Anglophone problem is being preached by those of the opposition. But when you find a CPDM militant uh, preaching uh, in support of the Anglophone problem, it's something to write home about. Well, it's something to write home about. What, what people have to understand is that whether you are of the opposition or of the ruling party like the CPDM, you mm -hmm. are a Cameroonian. Yes. You are also, if you are from the southwest or northwest, you are victim of what people from that part of the country are facing daily, which doesn't mean that even if you are from the CPDM, you are excluded. On the contrary, those of them who are of the CPDM, they are really being marginalized every day. And I think that what Fomukete has done is something very good, because look at the Cameroon National Daily, Cameroon Tribune, yes. where yeah. you don't have English. You have English, just some frames. where they write. is read. Ex yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we have to say. I said it once here. Look at the national army of this country, the police. The language taught in those schools is not English. They teach people in those schools in French. And how do you use one language in a school like that? And I have a, a cousin of mine who attends a school here called Enset. I've forgotten the name. Mm -hmm. You are, for example, you come from Manfe or Bengui or whatever, wherever. You studied from nursery to secondary school in English. Mm -hmm. And then you come here, you find yourself studying in French. I want to ask this question, Mr. Eddie Smith. Is there an Anglophone problem in the country? Sure, there is an Anglophone problem in this country because the foundation of this country is faulty. They have lied, they have outwitted the Anglophone from day one of the unification of this country. And I am not the one saying it. I can quote a book written by the last governor of the Republic of Cameroon, that is East Cameroon. His name is Pierre Mesme. He left Cameroon and became the governor of Algeria. He wrote a book entitled Le Blanc Sans Vent. In that book, he wrote plainly that Cameroon has become a bilingual country, having English and French, but with French as the official language. That is the reason why when you go out of, from this, out of this country, you say you are an Anglophone, people turn to think that you are, you are lying because the government of this country promotes only French, promotes only French, everything is there are, French. There are claims that uh, uh, some uh, government ministers who are Anglophones too do not encourage uh, uh, the English language because they deliver their speeches even in Anglophone zones in the English language. Yes, and the first culprit is the prime minister of this country who is an Anglophone, but, <laughs> but doesn't call him have, a culprit. Yes, he doesn't have the iPhone tree to speak English. He promotes French because the thing with most of those people who are ministers in Yaoundé who are Anglophone is that they want to please their masters. They are just behaving like second citizens. They are, I don't know, they are so afraid uh, to speak English. Whereas this, this is the only country in, 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 in the world where I see people getting shy, getting marginalized because they are speaking English. And I think Anglophones have to be militant 
in the defense of their language. They should stop those things. I hear people say, no, we have to unify the education system, the, judici the judiciary. No, we need to have two judicial systems in this country. One that practices the common law, and the other one can practice the, Napo the Napoleonic if we are one, law. If, if we say we are united, why don't create a, a single system for everything? No, we are united, but in the, in, in, we, we, we have our differences. You mm -hmm. can be united. It's like a marriage. You can get married to a lady who is uh, from Asia, and you are from Africa. You are one, but identically you are different. I think we, and it is to the advantage of this country to promote both cultures, the Anglophone culture as well as the Francophone culture. So that nobody should feel like they have been left out. Exactly. Let's look at another story that the papers are focused on today. We are talking about the fact that the, the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Philemon Young, has ordered uh, those who are due retirement to leave the public service. I would like to start by asking this question. Is the Prime Minister himself not old? Yeah, that's why it's a great paradox. You have a government of old people. For example, the Prime Minister himself is an old man. The President of this country is very old indeed. The head of the police of this country is about 77 or 78 years old. Yes. You have a government of old people asking other old, old people, people to, to, live. Go, to live. It's a paradox. So it is, it's something which is beyond comprehension because the prime minister has been hanging around power for almost 40 or 50 years, the same team with the president of this country. And that is the reason why those who are in retirement say we cannot go away because we have a government of all, all people but, running but, but, the country but, and uh, why do they want us to leave? But at least the Prime Minister has been the first person to, 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 to comment on this because we know that the, the public services are full of all people. Is it not maybe something, uh, a step forward to solve the problem? The thing is that the government, the, the, we, ha we don't have a fluidity. The function of this country is not fluid. Normally, if you have worked for the stipulated period, which is 30 or 35 years, you have to automatically go on retirement. But the same government is contradictory. There are some people, when they are due for retirement, the government, they mean the president signs a special decree to extend their stay again into the public service. It's a contradictory system. But since they have woken up from the slumber, they were sleeping for so long. It's a good thing. Yes, um, old people. Uh, not willing to leave the public service, and you have young uh, people who are graduating every from the universities and they are jobless. Don't you feel like this, uh, this is a good news for them? Because the paper says that if uh, the Prime Minister's uh, text is respected, close to 1,000 people will be going on retirement. Yes, close to 1,000 people will be going on retirement. That is 1,000 opening or opportunities for the teeming unemployed youth and graduates of this country. But I don't think that the fight against unemployment is to balloon the civil service. Because as far as I'm concerned, in a liberal way I look at things, we should have a small government, but encourage and open up the society, attract investment into the service sectors and other sectors, which in return will be able to absorb those who are living from school. Yes, it is good for those who are ready and due for retirement to go, and it's going to create an opportunity, but we should not think that to fight against unemployment, is yeah. to grow large our civil service, which is already very big, and in the future is going to create some problems. La Meteo this morning uh, also focused on the uh, ban on the heat truck uh, Colé La Petit that we spoke on that uh, uh, ban last week, and the paper is saying that the, the ban on this song is making it more popular. Sure, it is true. It's making us more popular because of one reason. We are living in a society which is decadent and immoral. People like it. And the question that most people have been asking is, why particularize, why target Kole La Petite? But I'm of the opinion that prefect or the divisional officer of the MIFI did something. You must start from somewhere. We have heard very decadent songs from people like Mani Bela, Cocoa uh, Jante, whatever they call those people with very immoral music. I think it's a start from somewhere. That prefect or that divisional officer took a courageous decision. Now, is for the Ministry of um, Culture and the government in itself to do something. But we are living in a society where it is immoral. When I will be able to say, if, for example, the head of, the, not the head of state, the wife of the head of state of this country is able to like a music song by Mani Bela or Coco Ajante, <laughs> where they are talking about, uh, um, singing about, j'ai envie de faire. So it is, it is, it is normal <laughs> for a young man like that to start. I think the problem is that... Yeah, there are people, what is so shocking is that, Mr. Ali, is that there are people in high places who actually dance this song and they feel like uh, the prefect did something very bad. Yeah, because we are having immoral people, decadent people who are the head of this country and holding strategic posts of responsibility. Hence, they frown against a courageous decision taken by the 
prefect or the divisional officer of the MIFI division, he is courageous to have done that. It is not yes. because everybody is a thief that you don't have to have somebody who is honest. Honest, that's true. Well, let's look at another story, the Chadian army uh, leaving Cameroon. Is it time for the Chadian army to leave when we are still uh, uh, fighting against Boko Haram? Are they leaving prematurely? Is it because the American troops have announced they are they're coming to Cameroon? Well, I don't know if, if it is because the American troops have announced they are coming into Cameroon that the Chadian soldiers are leaving, but the, sergeants, the Chadian soldiers were of immense help to us because we have a national army that we pride ourselves <laughs> of being one of the most strong in the continent or in the sub-region, but the reality is that we have a divided army, that the Chadian army, armed forces, when they came, they gave us a helping hand. Now, are they living prematurely? Is something I can't tell as at now. Well, uh, let's look at this other story, the visit of the uh, U.S. Deputy uh, Ambassador to Cameroon. He was quite uh, firm on his declarations. It's quite rare to find a diplomat with this uh, firm on his declarations. Well, sometimes... He was, here, he was here at Canal 2 English. He was here at Canal 2 English. It's true, yes. It is something that was courageous. It is what we, we, we want from the United States. The United States should lead because we have discovered that the Obama administration, since they came, he came to power eight years ago, has always tried to be conciliatory with every person in order to perhaps fix what the Bush administration left. And in doing so, America seems to have lost her leadership role. But we need an American government that is exemplary, that is steadfast against dictatorship, against the abuse of human rights. So it was good on the part of, on the part of uh, Matthew Smith to come here and be very clear in the position, expressing the position of his country vis-a-vis -vis Cameroon and the sub-region and Africa uh, in general. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Ellis Smith, for respecting our rendezvous. Thank you very much, sir. I want to thank you very much out there for your kind attention. Let's take another rendezvous for tomorrow. Goodbye. Uh, so, yeah.